This video is intended to make it easier to learn how to operate some of the features on your new coach. Please refer to the owner's manuals for more complete instructions. Due to the many different floor plans and options available, your coach may differ from the subjects depicted in this video. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Cheetah by Safari. In order to protect your investment, it's important you follow these instructions carefully. I know you're eager to learn all about your new Cheetah, so let's get started. Remember, before you move your slide room out, there's a few things you need to consider. Once you've settled on a location, make sure you have enough clearance for the slide room and the awning above, and don't forget to close the bay doors. Always have your coach at full ride height before moving the slide room in or out. You'll need at least 110 pounds of air pressure to get the coach to full ride height. Move your seat all the way forward. Be sure the ignition key is in the off position and that the parking brake is applied. Press and hold the slide room switch in the out position. The slide room will now be moving. Release the slide switch when the room is fully extended. You'll notice a change in the sound of the motor. When leveling your coach with the power gear system, the coach must be parked on a reasonably level surface. The transmission must be in neutral or park. The emergency brake must be engaged. The engine must be running. Turn the leveling system on by pushing the on-off pad on the level control panel. Next, push the auto pad to start automatic leveling. The system will initialize and start leveling in just a few seconds. During the leveling process, it's important that there's no movement in the coach. The green power gear light in the center of the control panel will illuminate when the coach is level. Push the on-off pad to turn the system off. If the coach is unable to achieve level due to excess slope, the four orange jack lights and the center green light will blink, retract the jacks, and move to a more level surface. Never lift the wheels off the ground with the leveling jacks. Lifting the wheels off the ground can damage the motorhome. To retract the leveling jacks, the ignition must be on. Turn the system on by pushing the on-off pad. The on-off and jacks down light will be on. Push and release the retract all jacks pad. The jacks down light will go out when the jacks have retracted fully. Push the on off pad to turn the system off. Visually confirm that the jacks have fully retracted before moving your coach. If the control panel is left on and inactive for four minutes, it will turn off automatically. To reset the system, turn the ignition off and then back on. For manual operation, the same procedures and conditions must exist with these exceptions. Push and hold the man pad for five seconds to engage manual operation mode. The light under the pad will illuminate, then extend the jacks as needed to level the coach, starting with the front jack first. This will help reduce torsion stress from the body of the coach. The amber lights next to the individual jack control pads indicate which pad needs to be pushed. As with auto leveling, the green light in the center will illuminate when the coach is level. When the coach is level, you can turn the system off and turn the ignition off. Retracting the jacks is the same as in auto mode. Push the retract all jacks pad. The weight of the coach on the jacks and the retract springs will retract the jacks. A visual inspection will ensure that the jacks are fully retracted. Make sure there's nothing in the way and that the floor is clean because dirt and grit can damage the floor. Press and hold the switch in the in position. The slide room will slowly move in. To stop the room before it reaches the full in position, simply release the switch. To continue the room movement, push and hold the switch in once again. The motor will change tone when the slide room is fully retracted. You can then release the switch. Remember, never move the coach when the slide room is extended. Do not move the motor home while the jacks are still in contact with the ground or are extended as damage to the jacks can occur.
Before plugging the power cord into shore hookup, make sure you have the shore power set to the proper setting on the set shore power screen on your inverter, depending on the shore power available. Turn the shore power circuit breaker off, plug in, and then turn the circuit breaker back on. Connect to cable TV if available and plug in the phone jack. This provides a connection throughout your coach for your phone and computer as well as your optional satellite system. When connecting the motorhome to fresh water, be sure to use a hose labeled for potable water to ensure the hose will not flavor your water. Connect the hose to the city fresh water hookup. The city water valve must be in the open position. Turn on the water supply. The water pump should be in the off position. When the water starts to come out of the overflow pipe, shut the water supply off as soon as possible. When you plan on staying hooked up to the shore water supply, turn off the city water fill valve. This will pressurize your coach water system. It's not necessary to use the water pump when you're connected to city water. Make sure you bleed the air out of all the faucets. The purpose of the gravity fill is to be able to introduce fluids directly into the fresh water tank. This is very useful for people who dry camp who can pour bottled water directly into the gravity fill. Adding antifreeze or winterization and disinfecting the water system is made simpler with the gravity fill. The optional Sanicon system is designed to reduce solid waste to 1 8 inch, allowing the discharge line to be smaller and thicker walled. The black water tank drain is for discharging solid wastes. The gray tank drain is for all other liquid drainage. Remove the end cap of the Sanicon system and ensure the sewer hose is properly connected at both ends. You'll want to have the gray tank at least half full to rinse the drain hose. If needed, fill the gray water tank by running water in the shower or sinks. Use the monitor panel to observe tank fluid levels. When the gray tank is half full, stop filling it. Keep the black drain valve closed until you're ready to empty the tanks. When you are ready, open the black drain valve and turn on the switch for the Sanicon. When that tank is empty, Flush the black tank by connecting a non-potable hose to the flush system fitting and turning on the water supply. Let it run for at least three minutes. Turn off the water supply and close the black tank valve. Open the gray tank valve to rinse the line. When the gray tank is empty, turn off the Sanicon switch. If you're preparing to travel, close the gray valve and remember to replace the end cap on the drain hose. The Sanicon system is equipped with a gray water bypass hose to accommodate continuous drainage of gray water when connected to a sewer system. To operate any LP gas appliance, 12 volt power must be available to power circuit boards, igniters and motors. Make sure the battery cutoff switch is on, the battery must be fully charged and the LP valve must be turned on at the tank and at the appliance. Some appliances require 120 volt power. If you're starting an LP or liquid propane appliance for the first time or if your coach has been in storage for more than a couple of months, it could have air in the lines and the appliances may need to be cycled several times before the LP reaches them to ignite. To expedite this process, turn on a range top burner until it lights. This will bring the LP into the main line more quickly, leaving less air to purge in the branch lines that supply other LP gas appliances. To operate the range top burners, open the valve for the desired burner and rotate the igniter knob clockwise at the left hand side of the stove. Never attempt to ignite more than one burner at a time and never leave the cover down when using the burners. To operate the oven, if so equipped, Push in on the oven control knob and rotate it counterclockwise to the pilot on position. Light the pilot located toward the rear of the oven under the broiler. The oven and broiler are now ready for operation. The refrigerator can operate with both AC power and LP gas. To start the refrigerator when plugged into shore power or the generator is running, press and hold.